I'm very excited about the future of St. John's. I love this place very much. And uh, I am ready to take any questions that anybody has. Okay, that was great. Have a nice night. Drive safely. All of us have probably had family members, friends, who kids are now in college. And Asian finance, Asian economics have become um, a focal point for a lot of studies for those students. Now, at 18, 19, they are being challenged to learn a new language, which is Mandarin. Now, obviously, I have a personal interest in this as well, but my question to you is, when is St. John's going to seriously consider offering Mandarin in the school, even to the young kids, uh, because that's going to be the best time for them to learn the language? I would, yeah, yeah, fair, fair. And, and okay. I would say, and my own personal feeling is my kids have now had five years of French, um, and I understand this is an introduction to French and everything, but I think the only thing they've gotten out of French is to know the storyline of Les Mis, and they can count to ten. Um, and I, you know, I feel like them learning a language that they can take with them to college where it's going to be a requirement would serve them much better than five years of French from pre-K to third grade. Great. Thanks for your question. Um, first, I would say is that's the first time anyone's ever told me that Asian finance and Asian economics is becoming a college uh, phenomenon that's requiring people to learn Asian. So that's the first I'm hearing that. But uh, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. By choice. Right. Okay, fair enough. I, I, but, but, but we hear this quite a bit about the, the desire for Mandarin. And I will tell you, I'm going to be candid with you and say, it is not something we are seriously considering right now. Um, it would be a major strategic initiative for the school because if we're going to do Mandarin, we're going to start when they're three years old. We all know how that works. We're not going to learn Mandarin when we're in ninth grade. It's not going to happen. And so if we do that, that would be a different strategic vision for the school than we're on right now. And what I would say also, in term, people will second guess me, people will second guess others on, on decisions like this, but I also was around when Japan, Jap, Japanese was everything we needed to learn, and I was around when Russian was everything we needed to learn. And I'm not saying that Chinese will come and go, that's probably not a good bet, not a bet I would make, but I believe that our principal responsibility here is liberal arts college prep, and I believe in cultural multiculturalism. Um, but I do know that that would be another investment that the school has not yet decided it's ready to make. But I appreciate the question because it's very thoughtful and it's a consideration that many schools will take and some will choose to take it and some will not. And I, I don't think the jury's, I don't think we've made a forever decision, but as of right now, it's not something we're saying in the next two years we're gonna pick up Mandarin. But thank you for your question. Does anybody wanna know what my favorite color is? Spartan blue. There you go. Okay. Yes. Microphone, please. No, I usually don't need a microphone. Yeah, it's Milos. How are you? I, the lights are hard here, so I can't see where everybody is. Um, thank you very much for giving us an overview of the school. It was very informative. I appreciate the time and everything that you've done in the school. We've seen a lot of changes over the last few years at St. John's. Many, many times you talk about the investment in the facilities, and we all see it. I've seen the transformation in the middle school and the upper school, and my kids are taking advantage of that. Um, yet we also realize the timing of it and the debt burden. Can you give me an idea of, of, of how much debt we're, we're sure. still sitting on? Sure. Let me, uh, I was trying hard to be as transparent as I could without actually answering that question, but I'll answer it for you, okay? Uh, in July of, of uh, in June 30th of 2011, what I'm trying to tell you is when I arrived <laughs> and when Todd Zayner became the director of finance and operations, the school's total debt was $9.7 million, okay? As a result of paying down principal payments through a, a, a mortgage instrument, similar to the one we have at home, but I don't want to get into the details of all of it, uh, we've paid off uh, $800,000 in the two and a half years through December 30th plus the million dollars that we recently received. So 9.7 has become 7.9, okay? At the same time, we've benefited from a very strong market with our endowment. Many of you probably have no idea that we have an endowment or what its value is. When, when I arrived, by the way, I'm not taking all the credit for this. The market did a lot of the great work and the trustees have managed the portfolio, not myself. Um, 
but the, the endowment was 4.5 million, now it's 5.4 million. So if you want to remember, the two numbers have reversed. But what I'm encouraged by is the school had, prior to the recession and prior to the last capital campaign building, uh, building the middle school uh, second story and the upper, new upper school building, the school generally ran, if you go back about 10 or 12 years, the school ran with about an equal endowment to the debt. It was like four-ish each. Then the spike occurred and enrollment dropped. It really made it an interesting challenge for the school. So what I'm encouraged by is that this gap, which at one point was, if I do the math correctly, $5.2 million is now down to whatever, 7.9 minus 5, $2.3 million. So we're going in the right direction. And I'm hoping, I can't make anybody any promises about other people's money in terms of their willingness, capacity, and inclination to give us big checks like we talked about. But as much as I love being in the classroom teaching kids math, there are two jobs that I have here that are paramount. One is deciding who gets to work at St. John's and who doesn't, and my colleagues know that. Who I hire is so vital to the success of the school. And the second thing is helping us raise money and ensure our long-term financial sustainability. And so we can do one really well, but if I don't do both really well, then I have to admit that it'll be at least disappointing and I'd probably say I failed. And so it's not an easy market to raise money in, but I'm trying. Thank you for your question, though. It's a great question. Yes, hi. Hi, I'm Kim Henley Brown, um, Kennedy Brown's mom. Great. Not everybody knows. <laughs> we were sent in a survey um, concerning the uniforms. Yes. What were the results of the survey? Uh, uh, not good. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> So, and by the way, I don't mean to make light of that. I, I, like to, I, I hope people understand that I have a, uh, I and all of my colleagues operate with an open door policy. And I love this school, and I can get very defensive about things very quickly, okay? Um, but I try hard to listen when people say, I have a concern, and, um, and I try to give people an honest answer. We, we thought we worked with a company that was reputable, and I think they are reputable. They're used by other independent schools in the area. We got referrals from other schools, but it hasn't gone so well for us. And uh, we entered into, just so you know, we entered into a three-year contract with Sunshine Uniform Company. And we, we got back, by the way, I appreciate the folks in the PTL organizing. We got back a survey that said some things are fine, but a lot of things we're not happy about. Let's just, let's just leave it at that. Uh, next year will be year three of that contract. And I have, uh, I have talked with Mary Virginia and Mary Helen and Scott Zacker, and I've said we are going to partner with the PTL as we evaluate next year what to do going forward. But what I want everyone to be clear about is that we will have a uniform style dress code. I do like the idea of menu dress, but if we can do it with a uniform company that people feel better about, um, perhaps some style changes that people feel better about, um, then I'm willing to go in that direction. I don't mean to say, hey, it's the company that I hired, we're gonna stick with them, and that's all there is to it. I'm, I'm disappointed that we're not feeling better about it because what I want you to know, if you ask any of my colleagues, and I don't know what goes on in everybody else's home on the way to school, but the fact that our teachers are not having, particularly old teachers of older students, are not having daily conversations with kids about the clothes that they're wearing to school, what's appropriate, what's inappropriate, it has enabled our teachers to be partners with our kids in ways that they have never been before. Because when you come into school and someone's concerned about inappropriate attire, let's just say it that way, you, you, you establish this adversarial relationship that's not healthy. We want our teachers to be advocates and supporters of our kids. And so I think everybody has given us really good feedback about lots of concerns about the uniform company. And, and believe me, I don't try to do anything that upsets parents. You know, if I could have everyone here be completely thrilled with everything we do, I would try to accomplish that. And so I appreciate your question. I'm glad that you're concerned about it. I'm glad that our parents are engaged. And when we go through the next iteration, we're going to involve a, a group of parents who are interested in helping us out. I hope we don't get into too many style points on it, but I think we, we want to get people uh, in a more comfortable position there and feeling good about the program. Yes, sir. I talk quite a bit about uh, finances and the importance of uh, maximizing uh, finances for the school. And uh, I'd like to ask you about the uh, thinking behind the decision to uh, use tuition payment through a third party uh, and how does that play into that? It, when, I, when it was first adopted, I thought, well, wouldn't, doesn't that mean another company is, in essence, taking a cut of 
all the tuition that would, uh, a portion of it that would normally go to the school? That's a great question, but Todd is here, right? Why don't we pass the microphone back to Todd? I don't mean to throw you under the bus, Todd, but I know you're going to answer it accurately, and I'll be making stuff up. Todd's our director of finance and operations. He I would say that the um, decision to go to a third party um, to collect tuition has actually been a cost-saving measure that we've implemented. The amount of time, as you can imagine, billing 600 and 49 students and their families on a monthly basis in addition to all the other uh, fees that we have was almost a full-time job for an individual we had in our business office. Um, it has allowed us the opportunity to not have that position in the business office any further. And um, there is actually no fee for the families that choose annual and the individual, fa the families that choose a semester payment option, the fee that they charge us is much smaller. And then, as you're probably all aware, the monthly paying families uh, that choose the monthly paying option, they already have a, a $150 surcharge in their tuition that covers the um, cost that tuition management systems provides us. So it has actually been a cost savings to us to go to use the third party vendor. Who's next? I have a um, very active little guy in, on the K through three playground. Great. Who gets absolutely filthy on a daily basis. <laughs> You're getting this one. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just wondering if there were any plans on the ground covering out there. Um, wow. And then also as a second part to kind of the uniforms, there, is there any consideration where particularly young boys would not wear white on Monday dress? <laughs> uh, let me try first. Um, thank, you, thank you for your question. Um, that's got to be frustrating. I'm, 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 I'm feeling your pain. You know, I'm, uh, people who know me uh, know that I'm inclined on occasion to pick up a wrapper or two on this campus. And um, one of my pet peeves is when I walk, you know, the, uh, the back side, the lower school side of the library, at the end of the day, often all of that um, recycled rubber, shall we call it, finds its way onto the walkway out there, and that's an eyesore to me. It turns out that it also works its way into the library carpet, which is an eyesore to the maintenance staff. You can imagine what it does to the vacuum cleaners. Um, so there's two questions there, though. There's the white on a second grade boy, right? Um, but that, that ground cover is getting closer and closer to being on my list, and I don't want to make a promise to you that we can't keep, but Todd knows I feel this way, Mary Helen knows I feel this way. I don't know if the right thing is some sort of artificial turf, because I have seen that in places. I want to make sure it's safe, and I want to make sure it drains. We have drainage issues on this campus, and so the, the, the surface we have now, while safe and ugly and problematic, doesn't allow the surface to drain, which is really important. Um, but it is on my list. I'm going to let Mary Helen entertain the question about white on young boys. I don't know what to tell someone who's getting lots of fun. Uh... I don't know that I know what to tell you either. Um, <laughs> It, traditionally, we've worn white on Mondays. It's been what we do, and I understand where you're coming from with that. Um, bleach. <laughs> I, I'm sure you try that, but once again, that's been our traditional uniform. That's something we can talk about, yeah, we can have conversations that. about, but I, I totally understand where you're coming from. You're not the only one. Um, it's also true of, of art days with paint and that kind of thing, but certainly something we can take yeah, into consideration. I, but following up on that, in the next iteration, I think we should talk about lower school maybe particularly, right? Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. In the next iteration, what is, what is proper on Monday? And maybe we can make a, make a change. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, well, <laughs> but yeah. You know, I, I think it's, you know, to me, what's more important about, just speaking for myself, what's more important about Monday to me is that everyone look alike. Mm -hmm. And so I think we could figure out a way to make everybody happy. That doesn't seem to be too tall in order, no. as, long as, as long as the commander in chief of the lower school doesn't mind. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is kind of happy coincidence here, but I just found two pieces of corrugated, you know, recycled rubber on the stage up here. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So.